Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Weina. Um, I'm from. I'm assistant professor from Stevens Institute of Technology. Um, so today I will talk about our current studies on the knowledge-guided data-driven design of ultra-high-performance concrete. And this work is done together with my colleague, uh, Professor Yi Bao. Um, so like, this work will deal with the ultra-high-performance concrete, or UHPC in short. So UHPC is actually a type of high-performance fiber-reinforced concrete. Um, it features with high compressive strengths, tensile strengths, and durability. And it, as you can see here, it performs much better than other types of concrete. However, to achieve the high performance, the UHPC have to design with a large amount of cement or cementitious materials, chemicals, and, the, and steel fibers. And that introduces it with very high cost high carbon footprint, as well as the high embodied energy. Um, so as you can see here, it's much higher than other types of concrete as well. So to develop the UHPC uh, with the sustainability, the typical way is to replace the cement, especially, and steel fibers with low carbon and low cost types of materials. For example, here, the cement are intensively studied to be replaced by the industrial uh, waste like fly ash, the municipal waste like the glass, and the agricultural types of waste like the rice husk ash. Um, so, but whenever we incorporate it with the new types of waste or new types of materials into the UHPC system, we have to conduct extensive experiments to test and confirm the performance of the new materials. And that involves a lot of uh, experimenting, time-consuming, costly, and labor-intensive. So because of that, uh, our team, uh, we developed an AI-assisted design uh, framework for, the, for this auto, automatically uh, discover the low-carbon and low-cost UHPC. Um, so for, under this framework, the first thing we did is to establish a highly accuracy kind of machine learning model and input is the concrete design variables, output is the concrete properties. And based on the prediction model, uh, we, in, we integrate or embed the uh, optimization and decision-making algorithms and for optimization. So the input here is the target properties. For example, if you have application and you want to have your UHPC with maximum mechanical properties, durability, and at the same time you want a low carbon and low costs, and you can set that as a target, and the output is the optimal design of the UHPC mixtures. However, um, the current or the, the, the design framework work we have have some limitations. First of all, it does not consider the domain knowledge. And um, the input and the output is solely rely on the data. So we don't know what exactly happened in the block box and um, it lacks the reasoning ability to interpret the reasons and the underlying mechanisms. And, um, and also uh, the second problems or limitation of it is the most machine learning models lack the generalization ability um, because those models are trained using the data sets with the specific ingredients. So if you consider like new types of materials, um, it cannot apply. <laughs> Um, so especially if the new materials is like waste materials, which has contains a large amount of variables, uh, like the particle size and chemical compositions, and the, the models cannot give you a like accurate prediction. So the current, currently, um, the sharply additive explanation is used and try to explain the machine learning models. However, this method can only evaluate the significance of the each design variables on the prediction results. And that this kind of significance is based on the data significance. And it, it fails really to interpret the underlying mechanisms. So to interpret the underlying mechanisms, we proposed the knowledge-guided 
AI designer. So for this AI designer, we integrate a knowledge graph. So this type of knowledge graph was created by the domain experts. Specifically here is the UHPC expert. So the knowledge graph will cover the knowledge of UHPC. So with using this, we can use it to guide the variable selection of the machine learning prediction model. And more importantly, we can use the knowledge graph to interpret the prediction results to enhance the machine learning performance from optimization. So compare with the laboratory experiment based design, uh, the knowledge guided AI design conducted the qualitative task by the knowledge graph instead of concrete experts. And the knowledge guided AI design conducted the qualitative, qualitatively, uh, qualitative, um, sorry, quantitative um, task through machine learning instead of the laboratory experiments. And also, uh, our current AI assisted design framework, we only consider two components. One is the data experts to predict the concrete properties, and also the decision maker that to optimize the UHPC mixtures. So now the, the newly proposed knowledge guided AI assistant design framework, we consider like one more components, the knowledge. So we have add a domain experts or the knowledge graph to this framework, and the knowledge graph will be able to guide the data expert to improve the accuracy of the prediction model, and also it will be able to interpret the prediction results. And also um, the decision maker, any information from the decision maker uh, will help to enhance the knowledge of the domain experts. So as a key feature of the knowledge guided uh, machine learning, oh sorry, the, uh, the AI designer, the, key, the, the knowledge graph here is an autology graph describing the domain knowledge, the UHPC knowledge. So here shows the example. So as you can see, you can clearly, clearly see the key components of UHPC and you can see the definition of the UHPC the key properties include the fresh properties, hardened properties, and durability. And further, you can extend it into the specific uh, properties like the compressive strengths, tensile strengths, durability, and et cetera, et cetera. And from the same way, we can see the categories of the processing methods, like the curing scheme, curing time, and mixing methods, as well as the raw ingredients, like the water, aggregate binders. So each of the, uh, the key uh, entity can be extended and divided into a specific entities that are correlated to some chemical compositions and physical properties which impact the key properties of UHPC. For example, the, sorry, so, for example, uh, the slag is one type of the supplementary cementitious materials. It's one type of binder. So, uh, this entity is, uh, is correlated to some uh, uh, chemical composition and physical properties. And we know that a key component of the slag is the silicate. And the slag contains high silicate, which can promote the pozzolanic reactions. And the promotion of it could help with the system to generate more dense cement hydration products like the CSH. And this would help to increase the concrete compressive strengths. And based on this uh, knowledge, uh, we, can, we can unlock some fundamental mechanisms uh, if we consider some kind of materials. So the key components we should consider for the knowledge graph are the raw materials, raw ingredients, the processing methods, 
and the testing methods, and also we can consider the physical and the chemical properties, like the particle size gradation, the chemical compositions of the raw materials. So unlike the, uh, if, if we want to discover types, types of new waste materials, instead of, a, of input a name of the waste materials, we can input the chemical and physical properties. So here shows an example or simplified uh, example of our knowledge graph. Um, so this kind of graph, uh, just to show you the conceptual ideas, it can always be extended to a more comprehensive types of the knowledge graph to consider more parameters, design parameters, and more properties of UHPC. So for now, there are uh, three major ways we can use the knowledge graph. The first is we can use the knowledge graph to guide uh, the var variable selections for the machine learning models. Um, so here shows the example. If we consider to predict the compressive strength of concrete, we know that there's many, many design variables that we should consider, but if we create it uh, such a knowledge graph by experts, we know that what are the key parameters affecting the compressive strength. So here, we, we should consider the mixture design, var variables, physical chemical properties, and processing methods. So that helps us to select the important variables for the machine learning models. And the second way we use it is we can uh, use it to guide the strategy of improve the concrete properties. So here shows an example. Uh, if we want to develop a UHPC with new types of wastes, here named the off-specification off fly ash or the OSFA in short, and we found that if we simply replace the OSFA with, with cement, and it significantly reduce the compressive strength. So from the AI, oh, sorry, from the knowledge graph, and we can clearly see what are the strategies or the pathways to increase the compressive strengths of UHPC. So here um, we can see that or if we put some of the SCM supplementary cementitious materials, which can promote the opposolanic reactions, highly possible we can increase the compressive strengths. And because of that, we try to incorporate some of the slag, the pozzolanic materials into the system. So uh, once we have uh, incorporated this um, to 40% of slag, we show significant increase in, uh, of the compressive strength. Uh, it's higher than the control. And the third way uh, we use the knowledge graph is to interpret uh, the results. So the, this one is to try to interpret the effect of the new materials, the OSFA, so from uh, the pathways of, of our knowledge graph, uh, we can describe so how the OSFA affects the compressive strength. The OSFA has very high uh, content of the carbon, um, and so that it has, it has a relatively a very high uh, loss of ignition. And because of that, it has low reactivity. And the low reactivity means less hydration product of cement formed. And it means it will decrease the compressive strength. But it also has some competing effect that the OSFA have finer particle size than the cement. And it has this filler effect, which could promote uh, the cement hydration and increase the compressive strength. But for, for the OSFA here, as it has very high carbon content, the dilution effects dominate the results. And also from this knowledge graph, we can, we can explain uh, the role of the slag in the system. Um, so here you can see that the slag, uh, the increase of the strength is due to the two effects. One is the slag has high content of silicate and calcium oxide and it promotes the pozzolanic reaction as well as the hydraulic reaction. And in, it, it's introduced like more um, CSH into the system and increase the compressive strength. 
And also slag has finer particles, it has size effect, uh, which can help with the generating more hydration products to increase the compressive strength of uh, the UHPC. Um, however, also you can see that it has a negative effect. Uh, if you have used a large amount, like here 60%, the dilution effect again dominates and you will have the strength reduced. So in conclusion, the knowledge graph uh, can be used, first of all, to select the variables for the machine learning prediction model. And also it enables the AI designer to interpret the prediction results. And the proposed approach has been implemented to design the UHPC with high compressive strength, low materials cost, and no low carbon footprint. For more details um, of our results, you can see, you can check our current papers. And for the two papers on the knowledge uh, graph, uh, it's still impending. Hopefully it will publish soon. Um, and here I want to thank for all our contributors. Uh, Mr. Peng Wei Guo, uh, Dr. Surush Majobi, uh, and my colleague, Professor Yi Bao. And thanks also to our external sponsors. With that, thank you all for your attention. All right, questions? So what is your intake on uh, silica fume? If you want to do the knowledge approach with mm -hmm. very high CIO2 content. Mm -hmm. compared to slag. So, so your question is... For silica fume, they have really high SiO2, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you have any trial that you did and see how far from slag, for example? Slag has less SiO2 content than uh, silica fume. Yes, yes, uh, that's, that's true. So, uh, so your question is why don't we use, we use the slag and uh, not use silica fume? We examine the slag, not the silica fume, but we can also use silica fume to improve the, the system. But uh, consider the cost and everything. Silica fume is, is expensive, more expensive than slag. So we use uh, the slag as a type of SCMs to improve the system. Great presentation. Uh, for the, um, when you show the effect of uh, um, off-spec fly ash, and uh, you see the strength reduction, those data. Are, these, are those still experimental data, or it's... Uh, uh so we do both. So first, we, we conduct the experiment, and it's, it's me, sorry, let me show it, show it. So you see here, we uh, have two types of data. One is experimental data, uh, based on our lab laboratory work, and also the predicted results using our uh, AI designer, we can predict uh, pretty much good for the for the for some of the results. So we do both. What's the, so you, you train the AI model yes, yes, because our our, our AI model uh, even this is a new types of uh, waste materials. But as we consider not just the, the type of ma materials, but also the physical and the chemical properties. So we input the chemical and physical properties into it, which can also give us a very pretty good predicted results. Yes, yes, correct. And, chemical and physical properties. properties. Yes, 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 correct. Very interesting presentation. Could you please give us an example of how do you interpret your knowledge graph? Interpret the knowledge graph? Yeah, like how do you get the reasoning relationships based on the graph that you show? Um, Maybe you can show one of the case studies. I think you showed two case studies. Yes, yes. Yeah, so here, so here is an is a example of the knowledge graph. So OSFA, um, let me see. So if we consider uh, the OSFA as, um, as um, um, a type of uh, the SCMs, and we, we can see that the OSFA itself, it has uh, the, the high, the loss of, in, of ignition, and so that it has low reactivity. And so, can you see my, my arrow? No? Oh, sorry. Here. So, um, so as, a, as a one type of uh, the SEMs, we can, we can check like, oh, what are the 
physical and chemical properties and eventually in, uh, affect our composite strengths. For OSFA, uh, we, can, we, we can identify its chemical properties. For example, it has high LOI because we, it's high, high carbon, but we consider it as a high LOI. And also, so the LOI has low reactivity and so that it has less here, CSH. And less CSH means uh, low or reduce the compressive strength. Uh, and also, uh, if it meets some other criteria, for example, the physical properties, we can see that the physical properties, if you add the particle size, if you have finer particle size, you can see that it can densify the microstructure and it can form uh, like more CSH to increase the compressive strength. So basically, this is how we use it. Thank you. So, so that's actually very, very, very good question. Uh, yeah, this could be uh, automat uh, is automa is automated based on the integration yes. of machine learning and the knowledge graph. Yes, yes. So we, we write in a way that computer can, can easily understand. Yeah, so you can originate and create or, and, and, and extend by the computers. Thank you very much. Thank Let's uh, thank uh, Professor Mo again for her very interesting presentation. Um,